Hi, this is Janos, it's Real World Audio, and I received lots of wonderful comments for, for this latest video of mine, the Altec 288 compression driver used bare, and uh, an ESS S1226, he, he commented that he will try out to take off the horns and, and see how they project upwards and what. My, my comment for that is that uh, it will be highly uh, colored because uh, the, the crossover is built in your speakers to compensate for the, for the horns. And that compensation is, is, a, is a, a, a very strong attenuation in the mid-range frequencies between a kilohertz and three kilohertz. So, so when you try it without the horn, it, the one kilohertz through three kilohertz region will be, I would not say part, practically missing, but it will be partially missing. So, so basically, uh, that will impact the sound in such a way that, that, that the sound will not have impact. So if you have something like, like a, a drum kick or like a sound of lightning or anything that requires a snap, we, we will not have energy in it because uh, a lot of that energy that we perceive is carried in the one through three kilohertz region. But anyway, you will get a really nice uh, taste of what it can do. Just count with that fact that the mid-range will be quite missing uh, from the sound. Now, this question is, uh, what is the uh, blue tech in the mouth of 288? But what's it for? Uh, and um, and let, let, let's see, what's that blue tech for? You see, it's right there. That, that's what he's asking about. The, that piece of blue tech inside. Basically, it looks like a gummy worm and then stuck on the side inside there. And I did that. And now it's not, not the nicest, not, not the neatest, but it doesn't really matter. It's just a piece of blue tech inserted in there. And the function of that is uh, that when you do not have a horn attached here, and this whole thing is, is a block of metal, this is extremely heavy. Don't drop it on your foot unless you want to, uh, well, have, uh, well, un unless you want to become handicapped for life. If I would drop this on my foot from this height, then well, I would need, number one, I would need a lot of surgeries to fix it, but uh, it's very likely that they can put it together, but uh, I will well, probably have to quit dancing for life if that ever happens. It's extremely heavy. It's heavier than the woofer, than, than the 515 woofer. is lighter than this baby here. It, this is extremely heavy. And, um, and, and what I noticed is that without the horn, it has this metallic ringing, I think around 14 kilohertz. And, uh, and that's, I think, because you see, when, we look in, when you look inside, then uh, actually you see there's a hole in there. Well, we don't see much because it, there's no, not much light in there, but that hole goes in down there and it's essentially, this thing is a mini horn. So your diaphragm is down here. So, so actually that part that makes the sound is down here. So this is the cover, this is the cover that I'm showing here. That's the cover for the diaphragm. And, and it's right there uh, under that cover. And this whole space up there is essentially a mini horn. It's a mini conical horn and, and this is the mouth of the horn. And the throat of the horn becomes essentially the, uh, the face plug. That, that, that's just guiding the energy, guiding the sound, and then it just extends here. So this eventually, while we are not using that big horn on top, but it already has a built-in horn already. And I think that's the reason why only these large format compression drivers work without a horn, 
because they have already a built-in horn of substantial size already. So that's why we don't uh, need the extra big multicellular multicell horn or other horns that we want to put on top. And, uh, and actually this blue tech thing is perfect to cut that 14 kilohertz ringing. And, and that metallic uh, taste in the sound, it goes away completely when you put that tiny piece in there. Tiny piece of blue tech. Okay, let's go back to here, to the computer. And uh, thank you MFR58 for, for your question. And um, let's see what's next. Uh, humans. Actually, I, I, I will, I will ask, answer Humans' question in a different video. I, I think right now let's just continue with, with the ones on the compressor driver. Uh, Ramsey is asking about, uh, this is also a different question, but anyway, I can, I can really answer that quickly. He's answering about, asking about a subwoofer enclosure and um, and, and using an uneven surface of, for the enclosure. And I, I would say, say that it might matter a tiny bit, but, but, the, but the, the subwoofers are uh, creating really low frequencies that are much bigger, much longer than anything on the surface of a subwoofer. So it's not going to affect the bass at all, but if the... Uh, if, if there are like uh, glass surfaces close to the subwoofer, then uneven surface will help to break up the resonances from the glass surfaces. So mm, it have like a, can have like an extremely minimal to no effect on the sound if the surface of the enclosure for a sub is uneven. So thank you, Ramsey. He, he, he really asked a lot of good questions. Um, uh, well, this is also a different uh, uh, question, but anyway, I think now, now that we are in a row, answering all kinds of questions, um, I think I will come back to Human's question and answer is <laughs> here as well. Uh, but now let's uh, look at user X, G, 6 and a bunch of letters and numbers. And he is saying, I am a novice here. Is there a decent ready to use low watt tube amplifier somewhere or do you pretty much have to DIY everything yourself? And my uh, question, I mean the question, my answer to this question is that um, the most popular low watt tube amp is the Deckware Zen. So you can get that, it's pretty much uh, the cheapest high quality uh, low watt tube amplifier made. Uh, it has uh, one catch. I think it has like a, already a year long wait list. So if you order it, then it's going to be a year until you receive it. But everyone who waits and then says it was well worth the wait. Uh, other than that, you can go for other options like uh, but, but those would be pretty much very expensive. So if you want something affordable, like the deck version, you have to wait a lot. And if you want something that is uh, right away available, like the Yamamoto, that costs a lot. And that's true in general. Uh, there are also kits that you can build. I think Bottlehead still has uh, uh, lower tube amp kits. You can get that, but then you have to get into DIY to do it. So, so basically, I think uh, pretty much the answer is when one wants a low power tube amplifier, you pretty much have to DIY it yourself. But then there the options are really wide. There are lots of companies who are uh, offering kits and uh, it's a good idea to, to go for a kit. I also saw your Lagrange speaker design. I wonder why companies wouldn't mass produce this speaker or sell DIY kits. It seems easy to me. Uh, actually, I, I, I will answer your question that why companies wouldn't mass produce a speaker like that because it is, uh, 
it takes a lot of work hours to, to reproduce at least the, the full version that I'm, I'm, I'm doing. It is just completely inaffordable for a company uh, to, to pay that many work hours or, or do that kind of uh, uh, nuances on the cabinet work. And also one more thing, when you mass produce a loudspeaker, in that case you uh, need to have a supply of the cabinet material in very large numbers. And that is impossible when you look at uh, plywood or hardwood. That's not something that you can mass produce. You have to inspect each wood, each panel personally and, and choose the good panels. Otherwise it will be a really noticeable downside for the, for the cabinet. Uh, and and when, when a company wants to manufacture hundreds or thousands of it, they will not find enough material, especially now with the wood shortages that we had over the past couple of years as a consequence of the pandemic. And, uh, and that's why, because of the shortage and, and, uh, and, and tough availability, and also much more expensive than MDF, companies use MDF for the material, which it has excellent availability, it's cheap, it's, it's consistent, and, uh, but it, it, it just does not help with the sound, that's what I noticed. Uh, when you go DIY, the number one thing to do is to ditch the MDF and that will bring you closer to natural sound. Of course, if you just do that alone, it's not a guarantee. It might even uh, take your system to, uh, to a, a step towards where you don't want to hear it. If the rest of your system is not compatible with natural sound, it will cry at you saying, I want the MDF back. Because uh, nowadays the majority of our commercial uh, amplifiers and cables and etc. are optimized for MDF as a cabinet. The sound is optimized for that. And when you break stride, then, it's the, com then the commercial world is punishing you. So you will have to do uh, a couple more steps, couple more changes to really take it to, to uh, a road further along that it's able to play around with, play along with the uh, natural cabinet. So I think that's about it. And plus, speaking about Lagrand, this is something that would be a total failure for mass production, even if they would launch it and, and for some miracle it could be produced at an affordable price. And that's because uh, people who can afford it, uh, it's almost a guarantee that their systems are nowhere close to that range where they can play with that speaker. And, and when you uh, put a low-level amplifier with it, a low-level source, it's, it's going to show it. This is not a magic pill, it's not a magic transformer, it won't transform mediocre amplifiers to, to an Ongaku or, or a Dan D'Agostino. If, if we feed it garbage, it will give us garbage. Uh, the, the amazing property of this speaker uh, is that uh, when you have an excellent uh, amplification, then it will reward it. And under an excellent amplification, I don't mean you have to pay an arm and a leg. It can even be a Deckware Zen, that would be perfect. Or any of the uh, tube DIY kit will work wonderfully with it. And there's one more thing with Lagrand, why mass production wouldn't work, is because the speaker is optimized for low level listening, I mean low uh, volume listening, so medium to normal vol volume. And nowadays we live in the era of loudness wars and, uh, and this is not the speaker to play loud. But I have to add that uh, last week at work we had a, a, a little party in my office 
where I have the system set up with Lagrand driven by my Darling amp, which is eh, a slightly over half watt per channel. And, and Monday afternoon after our uh, staff meeting, uh, a couple of us, they, they, they really beg, uh, begged me to, Janos, let's have a, uh, an audio party in your office. And uh, each one of us will select a song and we'll play the songs. And then I just, you know, looked up YouTube and then we all did our, you know, uh, song recommendations and then we were cranking it up and partying. And it was like, uh, um, really like party songs that we played with a lot of bass and, uh, and everyone was just absolutely thrilled and, and uh, you know, you, you, could, you could feel the energy in the room and, 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 and the people's mood just elevated tremendously. And, and they really asked me, Anos, we should do this every Monday. So uh, that's, that's my phone ringing. I will call her back. No, I just quieted it a little bit. Uh, so, so anyway, it's capable of doing that even with, with a low power tube and that's half a watt per channel. But I was really pressing it quite badly and and, and I could hear it that, that it was uh, going into uh, distortion, but it, it did it in such a gentle way that, that no one said, oh geez, this is horrible or, or it did not break or mood. I just like felt it, in, it gave me an indication, okay, what is the peak volume I can pay, play at and we are reaching it. But it was a small office. My office is really small. And then actually no one said that we should just crank it higher or can it go louder. We were all really happy with it. But uh, I have to say that when people buy a speaker, then they will compare it to the one they have. And probably it is almost 100% sure that the speaker a person would change for Lagrand can play louder. And, uh, and especially uh, they are also obscuring the flaws of the amplifier. So people will be really happy with that. Only that very narrow cohort of those weirdos like me would, or you <laughs> would be able to use Lagrand at home who are not settling for the average uh, commercial system but are going beyond and, and, and optimizing for natural sound, not, not that uh, uh, canned type of sound. So I think, what is it now? 18 minutes. I think right now I'm going to uh, stop my rant on answering <laughs> comments and, and, and thank you everyone for your amazing comments and, and I, th I think this, this will be a nice way for me to, to answer the comments. So thank you, have an amazing day and, uh, and have, a, have a perfect day. Uh, bye bye. <laughs>